In preparation for this video, I interviewed three clinical psychologists, I read the top four books on human behavior, and I paid $30 to watch The Science of Sex Appeal and took notes so you don't have to. I'm just kidding, I only did the last part, but in watching that I learned huge insight on human behavior and what creates sex appeal at its core, and I'm gonna share all of that with you right now. But before we get into that, I want you all to pull out your calendars right now and mark November 24th, because on that day I am launching my first ever private community. This is a limited space for you guys to join to get access to exclusive content never before mentioned insight and tips and tricks on how to become better looking, a better version of yourself, and you get access to live webinars, direct contact with me. You can ask me questions about your own life, how to glow up, how to talk to girls, problems you have in your life, anything, and I'll be there to help you out. So make sure you don't miss it because it's a limited space. We're not letting everyone in because if anyone can join, then what's the point? It's There's no scarcity. There's no, you know, if everybody could get six pack abs, no one would even care if everyone had it. So make sure you're one of the people that is able to join November 24th. Don't forget it. So when it comes to human attraction to each his own, right? Wrong. We are evolutionarily hardwired to read genetic clues in the face, body, sway, scent, and voice. Why? Because we are programmed to want to pass those genes down to our offspring to ensure their survival. So where do we begin? Most of the time, we start with the face. That's where you look first on a woman you're interested in, right? To begin, we have to go back a couple thousand years. The ancient Greeks believed in a mathematical formula called the golden ratio. The golden ratio is where you take certain points on the face, the nose, the ears, the chin, the eyes, and if the ratios between points of the face match this certain formula, and if you achieve 10 would be the perfect face, with six or more being deemed attractive. For example, the Egyptian queen Nefertiti scored 6.78 pretty attractive. The old time Hollywood actor Kirk Douglas scored 7. Not bad. And allegedly the most attractive man alive right now, Robert Pattinson, scored 9.25. It's pretty close to perfect. We make lightning fast subconscious analysis of people's faces. This is why it's so important to look max and put in the effort to maximize the attractiveness of your face in the forms of mewing, losing facial fat, and so much more, which we're going to cover in detail in my private community. So make sure you don't miss that. So in this documentary, they did a study where they took pictures of standard men and women, and then they used technology to morph them to a more feminine version and a more masculine version. And then they had people of the other sex rate what they found more attractive. Unsurprisingly, the men preferred women who looked more feminine and the women preferred men who looked more masculine in the form of wider jaws, you know, a little bit more prominent brow ridges and cheekbones, right? So what creates these more masculine looking facial structure? Well, that primarily comes down to testosterone, you know, this male hormone that is underdeveloped in women, right? So it's incredibly important to maximize your testosterone production, especially during puberty. And this is something I've covered in countless other videos and will cover in my community. But there's one other key element that's missing from this facial equation. And can you guess what it is? No, that key element is none other than symmetry. They did a test where they took a picture of a person and they changed their face to become more symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, and then in the other version they made it a little less symmetrical, you know, a little more abnormal. Then they had people judge what they found more attractive, saying that these two people were twins, like which twin is better looking. And 80% of people found the symmetrical twin more attractive. You see, symmetry is a sign of physical and genetic good health. If you have any sort of abnormalities in the womb or small infections, this can influence the symmetry of your face. So this is a genetic sign of less uh, attractiveness when it comes to mating. You don't want to pass those on down to your children. Is it possible to achieve a more symmetrical face? Believe it or not, it is. And we'll talk about that. 
in my community. <laughs> what makes a body sexy? Judging by the ads and the commercials you see plastered everywhere you look, for women it's a thin waist, curvy hips, and long slender legs, and for men it's, you know, broad shoulders, strong pecs, and washboard abs. But is this entirely accurate? Well, a UCLA researcher, Carrie Ellison, wanted to find out, so she did a test. She took hundreds of pictures and put them on a computer, and she had different people look at the pictures of the opposite gender, and she used an eye tracker to scan where they spent the most time looking. You would think that for women it's probably breasts, because breasts represent, you know, post-puberty and the ability to bear children, and for men maybe it's, you know, wide shoulders or their height, right? Well, it turns out that it's a little bit more complex than that. You see, there's a lot of variables that can influence influence where you're gonna look first. If they're wearing a short mini skirt, maybe you'll look at their legs first. If they're wearing jewelry, maybe you'll look at their face first, right? So she instead used a test using just plain silhouettes, no different variables influencing where you look. And she found that the place that people spent the most time looking was the hips. For women, it's most indicative of femininity if they have a 7 to 10 hip to waist ratio. And we see this throughout the ages in the form of art and film and whatnot. You see, women need wider hips because they need to be able to bear children. And that is a quick sign for men to emphasize their femininity. But they found that all of this shape and, you know, ratios and stuff was nearly meaningless without one missing link movement. Using some testing confirmed that a slight sway in the hips for women and a slight swagger in the shoulders for men was kind of a mental shortcut for the opposite sex. You know, if you have a little swagger going and a little bit broader arms, it kind of emphasizes your masculinity. If you have, you know, an irregular or weak walk, this represents genetic weakness and a lower life expectancy that you don't want to pass on to your offspring. But with a sort of sexy strut, a sexy swagger, it shows that you're in good health and going to have a higher life expectancy. So your strut, your swag, I think is something that's very important to maximize and make sure you have complete control over because it can make a drastic change in the way that you're perceived by the opposite sex. And we'll make everything about that very clear in my community. <laughs> the evolutionary psychologist Douglas Kendrick set out to find out if people really match with people that are within their same level of attraction level. So he did a set of tests. First, he had people pick a random rating number, you know, this is their status level, and had them put it on their forehead and then had them match up with each other with the intent of matching with the highest possible number. And surprisingly within this test, everybody matched within one point of their own number. Then he had them repeat the test, but this time without any numbers, without their head caps on, and then had them match with the best possible attractive option for themselves. And they found that everybody matched with a person within one number of themselves. How did they know their actual rating? Well, because they actually anonymously rated each and every of their peers before the test took place. So this confirmed that most of the time people end up with a mate that is within their, you know, same level of attraction. That's why it's so important to maximize your looks because that first barrier of entry can make the difference between ending up with a six as your wife or a nine. Everybody wants the nine, right? So join my community. So is it true that from the day we're born, the die is cast? Thankfully, no. See, physical attraction is not the only criteria for choosing a mate. It's important, it's the first barrier of entry, but it's not everything. There's a lot more to sex appeal than meets the eye, and we're going to cover all of it in part two. So make sure you follow, that'll be coming out later this week. Don't miss it.